Welcome to the Silent Glyphs Basics program version January 2015. This has been developed to help you successfully measure, manufacture and install bay window and curve tracks using facets, angles, strings and projections. In this training manual we will take you through the various steps involved in entering your dimensions and creating a finished basics drawing. We will cover entering measurements, choosing your system, control locations and intermediate pulleys, selecting brackets and offsets, references and naming conventions, bend radius and gradual curves, plotting curves, save, print and send. To start the program click on the basics icon. First decide how many facets your bay has, up to nine can be chosen. In this example we have chosen 5 by clicking onto the circle by the number 5 on the left hand side of the program. The input window is shown. Now choose your system by clicking onto track on the upper taskbar. This will reveal a drop down box of systems. Now scroll down and choose your desired system. In this case the 6120. For systems that have finials, it is possible to choose the relevant track with or without finials to be included in your measurements. For each system, the minimum radius is shown along with the profile number. We now have to decide if returns are required. If they are not, then click the tick on the right hand side and left hand side of the input screen to delete the option. Click back on the box to reinstate the option. In this case, we will have returns. There are a number of ways to input the measurements of a bay. Angles and facets, projections and facets, strings, left hand strings and facets, and finally right hand strings and facets. Silent Gliss has many years of experience of measuring bays and highly recommends the angles and facets option. This will always be the default. The facet measurements are now entered from left to right of the bay. Press enter after each measurement to move to the next box and then onto the internal angles which are again also entered from left to right. When the last angle has been added the bay will then be drawn to scale on your screen. The length of the left hand and right hand returns can now be added. By clicking onto the control location on the taskbar at the top of the program where required the motor or operation side can be chosen. If an intermediate pulley is required and is an option then click onto the intermediate pulley box on the top taskbar. The intermediate pulley will be placed in the centre of the profile and to scale as shown. If you wish the intermediate pulley to be fitted elsewhere then a manual note will be required along with the position dimensions. The brackets can now be chosen. By clicking onto the word bracket on the top taskbar will result in all of the brackets available for that track to be shown. Behind each bracket the offset from the wall to the back of the track is shown in brackets. By clicking onto the chosen bracket will result in the track scaling itself to the bracket. Again this is to scale. The return brackets must be chosen separately and will not automatically marry with the internal part of the track. Your choices will be shown on the top left hand side of the program. In this case the brackets chosen do not prevent the track from hitting the edge of the wall and therefore we must adjust the combination of brackets until suitable brackets are found that allow room for the curtain to pass the wall freely. In the situation shown we will pick 3138 brackets for both the bay and the returns. If the offset is anything other than the one related to the standard brackets, then any manual offset can be added by clicking on the word temporary at the bottom of both the standard and return brackets menu. Any reference comments can now be added to the reference box and draw ticked to show up on your drawing and plot. You may have noticed the bend radius at the bottom of the input box. These are minimum radius defaults and it is not possible to bend to a lower radii. However, in some cases you may want to increase the radius of the bend to make a gradual curve from a multi-bend bay. The first and last inputs refer to the return bend's radii 
while the others represent the bay angles. As you change the radii, the bend will change shape to scale. If the sizes given are track size, click wall size on the top taskbar and this will change the drawing to track size. Now we will explain how to plot arcs and curves. To plot, to plot an arc, click on the edit and then onto arc. This will bring up the input panel for creating a gradual bend or arc. There are five methods of entering the information. We have found that the three most suitable are projection and width, radius and width, and generating an arc from multiple projections. So firstly we will look at how to produce an arc by clicking onto the projection and width method. To start input your first internal offset which is a measurement from the start of the arc to the first projection. In this case 1500. This dimension is often, but not always, the centre of the arc. Secondly, input the projection in this case 1000 and finally the width of the baseline in this case 3000. Now click draw and the arc will be drawn to scale. All other tabs and options now work as previously explained. The second method of produ producing an arc is by using a radius and width. In this case we will use a 4000 mm radius and 2000 mm width to ascertain our arc. Please note that the bend finishes in line 90 degrees to the arc as standard and not in line with the baseline. If you wish to finish your bend at the baseline then a manual note must be added to the plot. The final and most common input option is generating an arc using multiple projections. First input the baseline width, in this case 3000 mm. Now input the first offset, for example 500 and then the first projection, in this case 536. Now click Add Measurement to input the second phase of measurements and here we have 1777 millimeters respectively. Repeat this process for all your measurements and in this example the last being 1500 and 850 millimeters. With accurate measurements, all of the radius lines should be equal. If the lines do not all sit on top of each other, it could be that the measurements are not accurate and the arc should be remeasured. Or, if only slightly out, one of the arcs can be chosen to plot the bend. Once we are happy with the inputs, we can choose one of the measurements and then click Select Arc Line, which will generate the plot. As previous, all other options such as choosing the track and brackets and returns are the same as previously explained. By using the file menu option, you can now save, print and send your drawings. We hope that you found this basics video guide useful and your local silent list representative will only be too glad to assist you further if required.